What's up gamers? Welcome to the Ozone. Welcome to another episode of... Ah! What's going on? Seriously though, what is going on? Illumix are making us solve this giant digital jigsaw puzzle uh, as if FNAF AR wasn't hard enough to solve already. I mean, seriously, why do we have a clown animatronic, a tree animatronic, and a little red riding hood animatronic. What's going on with Steel Wool? Well, nothing much. However, Scott is slowly going insane about the release date of Security Breach. He's going insane over NFTs, and he is also going omnipresent. That means he's always here. I guess the final question is, what's going on with Fazbear's Frights? Well, we recently got a cover for Friendly Face, and I am uh, terrified. But apart from that, Gumdrop Angel has uh, has dropped, uh, no pun intended, and surprisingly, it's it's consistently a good book. I mean, Inky Ink even said it himself in his recent tier video, it, tier list video. In his recent tier list video, he said that uh, they should be in the A and S tiers, which is amazing. Go sub to Inky, by the way. The one criticism I have about the book, however, is that the last story is kind of confusing if if you're not really paying attention all the way through. So today, I'm going to help you understand the story, and in doing so, we may learn a little bit about the identity of a character we've been wanting to know for years. Hey, speaking about identities, I'm on the final push to 10,000 subscribers. If we can get to that milestone by the 1st of July, I will make a full updated timeline video. So, make sure that you subscribe so that can happen again. I don't really know what to call you guys, whether or not it's the Ozoners, the Ozonites. I don't know, give me some suggestions in the comments below. And speaking of ideas, um, Gumdrop Angel was probably Scott's best book yet. Um, the first story was upsetting but spine chilling, the second story was spine chilling but horrifying, and the third story was horrifying but upsetting. It's a Venn diagram of emotions, and you could probably even put the the epilogue in the middle there. But today, what we're going to be talking about is what we found. No, the the story. It's it's called what we found. But you could also say that we're talking about what we found in what we found. Keep just just cut the bit out. Anyway, let's go through the story very briefly. Guy called Hudson, he's pretty cool, but he's had a tragic history. His father committed suicide, and so he was left with his stepdad who beat him. Uh, he was bullied at school and got his head flushed down the toilet, as you do, uh, and his home was burnt down, killing his entire family. He also wanted to join the military, but he couldn't, so he got a part-time temporary job at Fazbear's Fright. Ding, 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 ding! That should be ringing some bells for you FNAF theorists out there. The first page literally tells us that this story is going to be one that is based around the concepts in FNAF 3. Remember that. More tragic things actually happen to him. He finds a girl who likes him, however, after the first date, um, she finds out about the fire and then breaks up with him. His granny Foster tells him to leave the job and when he refuses, she says, Your path is your own. Then, one day, a new finding was brought to the location, and it turns out it's actually Springtrap uh, himself. And it turns out, upon closer inspection, that the suit has red flesh inside of it. So in other words, there's a corpse inside of this suit. Now let's stop right there, because I briefly want to talk about the nature of this event. In FNAF 3, there are boxes upon boxes of old animatronic parts and suits. And these were exported from the pizzerias, from 30 years ago. The big thing that was found in the back room of one of those locations was Springtrap. Hence the name of the story, What We Found. Why was there a Springtrap in one of those locations? Well, because of the FNAF 3 minigame in which we're the vengeful spirit and we scare off Afton and then he gets springlocked, he goes, you know. So now it's pretty much confirmed that this location, where, where Afton was springlocked, is a different location to the Fazbear's Fright, because uh, he gets exported from this location to that location. It was exported as a decoration, 
um, but he came back to life because, you know, he always comes back uh, due to what remnant or agony or whatever powers the undead in this universe. And already you can see that there are a lot of parallels of this story to the game universe. So when Hudson analyzes the suit, he starts to get a flashback to when his math teacher called him stupid. Uh, in the dining room, the suits magically start singing. He then hallucinates being slammed into a desk by his stepdad in his bedroom. Uh, or after all of this and Hudson recovering, he realizes Springtrap is now missing. Uh oh. Uh, he goes to the bathroom and hallucinates getting his head flushed in the toilet, as you do again. Uh, when he sees Springtrap, he chases after it, but he gets caught by a broken down Chica. And this is quite interesting because this could be the same Chica that we see at the end of the survival logbook, Logbook Chica. He then hears the voice of the girl he dated before, Faith. Um, these animatronic mouths start crawling up his body. It was a little bit like room for one more this part. Um, one of them even tries to enter his mouth, so it could be a little parallel, but I'm not too sure about that. Uh, <laughs> and then he wets himself. And then he wets himself. I mean, if it were me, I would have wet myself a lot earlier. So, um, <coughs> nice one, Hudson. And then a bunch more stuff happens, um, yeah, uh, you don't need to know about this, but a lot of stuff happens like what we've been talking about, but it's only 2am and his shift ends at 6. At this point, Hudson is battered and bruised by essentially all of his memories, um, but then he remembers what Granny Foster told him. Heat purges, fire heals. So then he goes to the kitchen and hides in the oven. <laughs> Why? Uh, and then he gets another memory, and this was a memory of when his house set on fire, and he now remembers that it was him that set the house on fire. I mean, he was running away from his stepdad who was abusing him, so it was justified, but still, he's guilty for the death of his family. He then realizes that the oven in Fazbear's Frights was turned on from the outside, um, and then the last thing that he hears before his death was Granny Foster's previous words of Your path is your own path. This story is one of the best stories I've ever read. The reason I didn't like it at first is because I simply didn't get it. But now that I do, it's, it's up there. It's really up there. It is, it's incredible. What is really happening here is everything that Hudson is seeing, everything that Hudson is hearing is but a hallucination. And where have we seen hallucinations before in the game? FNAF 3. That's right, the Phantom Animatronics. So my belief right now, and I'm not 100% certain, but I think Springtrap is the source of a lot of these hallucinations. Um, and, it, and it could be a result of tremendous amounts of agony um, being poured into the suit um, from past events. In this story, Springtrap arrives and Hudson starts hallucinating about all these things. And in FNAF 3, Springtrap is there, he's present, and then we get all these hallucinations of the Phantom animatronics. I also want to point out something that we saw in Dance With Me, that was mentioned in Dance With Me quite a bit. Uh, and that's that the hallucinations can do physical damage to the real world. Uh, in this story, Hudson gets battered by all of these hallucinations. Uh, and in FNAF 3, the phantoms can actually turn off the systems we require to beat the game. Something that I do want to quickly add is that there is another type of hallucination we see in the games, and its source is Golden Freddy. So, something to think about outside of this video is the possibility that the old Springlock animatronics are cursed by a lot more agony than the other ones because they're older and they've seen a lot more. And so therefore, because they have more agony, they are able to force hallucinations. Um, so that's just something to think about. Um, let's get some, some juicy lore. If you recall, the hallucinations in this story are ones that represent past events. A lot of them were about his stepdad abusing him, a lot of them were about him being bullied in school, and even a recent event about a girl and the time he set fire to his house. If you think about it, this is also true in FNAF 3. The Phantom animatronics are Phantom Freddy, Phantom Foxy, Phantom Chica, Phantom Puppet, Phantom Mangle, and Phantom Balloon Boy. I cannot believe I just remembered all six of them. These were all animatronics that were present in FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, which occur 
before FNAF 3 in the timeline. So, what does this mean? Well, this means that the person we play as in FNAF 3 has to have seen these FNAF 1 and FNAF 2 animatronics as threats prior to FNAF 3. And uh, who do we play as in FNAF 1 and FNAF 2? None other than Michael Afton himself. Before all this, we all assumed that the Night Guard was either Michael or Henry. We weren't too sure. There were a good few points for both. Um, but the only thing that I see with this it, that is slightly inconsistent is the fact that in FNAF 3, we hear a breathing sound effect. But of course, Michael Afton is a corpse. So how, how is he breathing? He doesn't need lungs to breathe because he's powered by, by Remnant at this point. The thing I will say about this is, though, um, that Michael can talk. Um, we've seen him talk in the sister location cutscene. I'm pretty sure he would be able to breathe if he was able to talk like a, like a regular human being. I want to add a few more points before we end off this video. For anyone disbelief that, um, that all of this or most of the events in this story are hallucinations, the ending of the story clarifies it. Hudson's friends come back to Fazbear's Fright and, uh, and everything is the same as they left it. All of the manic that happened in that night, none of it really kind of happened. It was all hallucinations. The only thing that is different is that there's a smell from the kitchen. And I think that's enough proof that firstly, it was all hallucinations. And secondly, hallucinations can have an effect on the real world. I guess it's also proof that the phantom animatronics aren't physical objects, which leads me on to my final point, which is about the FNAF 4 animatronics and the nature of them. FNAF 4 is still very mixed up and uh, in a way unsolvable at this time, but this story could bring us a step closer to solving the nightmare animatronics. Let's suppose we play as the crying child, which we don't because of the proof in the survival logbook. If we play as the crying child, then the nightmares could truly just be hallucinations of past events. He got tormented by his brother with the foxy mask, uh, you know, he got bullied by all of the all of the masked bullies, and he even got bitten by Fredbear on the fifth day, just like the fifth night you play against Nightmare Fredbear. It's perfectly okay to say that the nightmares are results of agony uh, and bad memories, but of course, that's assuming that we play as the crying child, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Of course, as always, it's been a pleasure making this video and I really hope that you have enjoyed it. Let me know if you want me to do more of this kind of thing. And let me know your thoughts on this story as well. I really want to hear your theories on this story because it's probably the most interesting in terms of lore out of the three. For me, this story is going way higher up in my list um, than I first thought. I, I just didn't really understand at first, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe for more of this, uh, 10k subs by July, can we do it with your help? Yes, yes we can. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Goodbye.